Welcome to the Elevate Everyday Podcast. I'm your host, Kay Junker. Today, I got Kevin Wu on the podcast. This guy is a badass. I actually met him through um, a mutual coach that we had, so Alex Toplin. Shout out to Alex, who was also on the podcast. Go check that episode out if you haven't already. Um, but yeah, so we met through kind of an online fitness group. He was training for a bodybuilding co- competition that he did. Um, and not, Man, go check this guy's page out. This This guy has over like a million followers across platforms. So pretty insane. He's doing big things in the fitness industry. Um, and recently I reached out to him because I saw he was on Alex Hormozzi's, one of his videos on YouTube. Um, and so I reached out to him. I was like, dude, you're killing it. And so I wanted to have him on the podcast. So first and foremost, I appreciate you, Kevin. Thanks for coming on, man. Um, and let's go ahead and dive right into it. So we were getting kind of deep. So I was like, let's let's hit record. So right off the bat, um, Kevin was telling me a little bit about how he got into fitness. We're connecting on how we, we were both like smaller kids growing up. Um, and that's what kind of made us want to put on muscle, get into fitness, kind of take control of our health and our fitness and our bodies and everything. Um, so if you could, Kevin, go ahead and just um, let the listeners know kind of that story that you were just telling me with like, you know, something that your brother said that really ignited you wanting to put on size and everything. Yeah, absolutely. So thanks for the introduction over here, Kate. Yeah. So a lot like other people when they're kind of growing up really skinny, because I was on that side of things, you get called all these names. It's me personally, I'm skinny, scrawny, toothpick, but like it didn't really kind of hit me until my brother called me anorexic. Because when you hear so many names so often, it's like almost kind of like going by your first name. It's like if someone had called me Kevin, it's like it's kind of normal. But like when my brother called me anorexic and that was like new to me, I was like, what's this? So I had to go on Google, type up anorexic, definitely butcher the pronunciation, but it automatically redirected me to the pronoun- right one. So yeah. one of the image tab, like you go on Google. And then once I saw those images itself, like that's when it really dawned upon me. I yeah. started like looking at those images looked at my body and I really did look like that. But like when it was my brother's perception and I really looked up to him, that was when I'm like, okay, shit needs to change. Like I, I can't be looking like this. I can't, you know, have that perception of my brother thinking me like that. Cause I looked up to him from that day forward. I was a commitment to myself. And I just never looked back really committed to that. For sure, man. And that's inspiring. And, you know, fast forward now, you know, you, you're, I don't think anyone would call you anorexic nor scrawny or skinny at this point. You know, you're, you're Jack, you've done bodybuilding competitions and stuff like that. Um, but I, I wanted to bring this up too, cause I saw a post and it really, I, I was like, man, this is a, this is a real post. So you were talking about how your parents, um, it, it, you told a story about how, when you like did your first bodybuilding competition, you know, maybe it's immigrant parents. I'm not really sure their story, but you said that they weren't kind of supportive of what you were doing. Um, so how have you dealt with, you know, your, your own family, um, and maybe your brother, like, you know, putting you down like that, or just like, you know, um, maybe not fully supporting the the growth of what you're doing. Um, how, how have you dealt with that? Yeah. So a little backstory in that one. I know, you know, what to exactly talk about probably podcast listeners don't know the extent of that one. When I did my very first show back in 2018 of May itself, like I, I did not get any support at all. And in fact, it was the complete opposite. When I came home from my very first show, I got third place. I was over the moon excited because it was it was like the peak of my life at that point in terms of like what I comes accomplished and just like such a great feeling yeah. of like competing on stage. It's something it's hard to replicate if you never competed before. But I showed my mom the picture of me on my stage and my third place medal. And she actually cried. Like it, not tears of joy either, but tears of sadness. And like in Cantonese, she said, what kind of son did I raise? And she continued crying on, started bawling. And then she told me to quit my job. I was an in-person person at the time and I was around the wrong people. And that that left me like scarred. And I honestly had a big resentment afterwards, even more towards her. And our relationship just kind of really went downhill and never really talked to her. And it was only until this summer I kind of rekindled things. But it was really rough because obviously, I guess, as children too as well, we're always kind of seeking that support in any ways, but throughout my whole career, whether I was working out wise, trying to be a personal trainer or anything like that, I never got any of that. So I was always like fighting that grain. And that's a big reason that my purpose in life right now is like live to inspire, just generally truly inspire the people to go for what they want in life and not what they expect them. Because my parents expected me to be an engineer and expected me to go down that route. 
and I almost did. I even fell back to that a couple times, but I was just really pursuing and being like, no, this is what I want. And ultimately really paid off to where it is now that I'm making a great living, inspiring a lot of people, have a big following. And honestly, I think it'd be absolutely miserable if I went down the other route. That's why I'm truly passionate about spreading that message over there. Yeah. Good for you, man. Man, that's awesome. Like, obviously you're crushing it and like, you know, testament to you, like following what you're passionate about. Um, and, and hopefully that's inspiring. I'm sure it is for a lot of your followers to see how much you've grown, even though, you know, you didn't have the most support for what you were doing in the beginning. So that's awesome. Um, but you said you rekindled the, the relationship. So is that, you know, how, how's that going now? Is it, is it completely like fixed? Does she support what you're doing or, or what's kind of the dynamic there? Yeah. So I wouldn't say it's hundred percent rekindled. I'd say it really kind of started back in, what was it? I think August pretty much now. So the big problem was after that incident in back in like 2018, like I barely spoke Cantonese, which is the language she speaks itself back then. But even like after that, I really, really resented it where I never spoke a word in the Cantonese. And once you start or stop talking language, you kind of forget it. So after then, I like, I don't know how to speak it at all. So that was a big problem when I was like, okay, I've done my shows and done all this other stuff, had a lot of personal growth, but I want to go back into like the bases, like have a good relationship with family or try to. Yeah. So it wasn't until, I guess it was like my ex, I was talking to her itself kind of, because I broke up with her <laughs> during my prep too as well. I was in best head space. Let's just yeah. say like after prep, after bottling, sat down, chat with her, kind of rekindle things back up. And she was giving me a lot of perspective and she was like learning another language, basically um, Gaelic. And she was going to Scotland next year, but it was like her going to that extent to learn something of her roots that she has no real reason to. I was like, okay, well, she's going that far. I could learn another language, well, learn the language again over here to just speak to my mom. And yeah. I spent like three weeks straight every single day learning that one. And then I just went over one day and just, I was so scared to do it, <laughs> but like, it was even like when I was driving there, I was like, no, I should go home. And that was a bad idea. I got to the driveway. I was like, what are you even going to say? I was just like overthinking everything. I yeah. literally haven't talked to her in like six years at this point. <laughs> and so I got into the room. I was like, okay, whatever happens, happens. And the first words, I guess, that came home, uh, drove to parents' house. I was like, it's all sucks. Basically, it's good morning. And then she kind of basically led the whole conversation. And like, she didn't know what I did to as one. I kind of explained it to her as best as I could. I had to use Google Translate actually quite a bit because I still didn't know a lot, right. which I guess I could have used the whole time. <laughs> but it was just like me being ignorant and just not wanting to because I had that resentment. That was things I had to deal with. But so now it's pretty great overall. I still realize that I have to really keep up the language if I want to speak it because after that thing or our talk, we did, we still don't really talk on like a regular basis, but like I didn't keep up the language so I forgot a lot still over the time <laughs> sure. so like even when they came over for the first time ever visiting me like on Friday night I still I didn't know how to talk like for a lot of the parts <laughs> but it was it's getting better and I have to definitely be more receptive to it because I guess even with the, when my parents are coming over I was kind of like almost I wouldn't say resentful but I was like hesitant because I'm in such a good headspace now life is so much better and that was because I went the other road and completely ignored them and did everything against the grain. So it was just like, sure. when they kind of walked in again, it was all these old memories and they try to bring a DVD playing back these old memories too. It was like, I was watching my old self and I was like, I hated myself so much back then. And like, that's all I could really think about when I was looking at those videos. And I was like, so that's like something I had to mentally kind of deal with it on my yeah. own. So I say it's going to probably take some time for a really overcome this new kind of stuff. Yeah, for sure. No, I, I totally get it, man. And and yeah, I, I really wanted to have this podcast with you because, you know, some of the stuff you were talking about with Alex Hormozzi was, man, I, I, it kind of resonated with me. I'm sure it resonates with a lot of people where you just, you've gone through all this growth, right? And so basically what you were talking about with Alex <clears throat> was how, you know, how you've gone through all this growth. Um, and now it seems like, you know, you're kind of in that middle or, where he was talking about how, you know, you're, you've maybe outgrown certain past associations or or things that used to do um but you're kind of not all the way fully with like you know a new friend group or like you know the, the new associations that you're kind of surrounding yourself with you're kind of in that middle ground um so first and foremost like what what prompted you getting on 
Alex Hormozzi's video? Like, how did, how did that even come about? Yeah, so I got asked that question a lot. He actually had like an Instagram post where he's like, oh, I'm doing a live. If you want to drop a question down below, we might choose you for that one. So I just dropped my question down below itself. And then I figured I had a really good chance just because I was verified. I was a big following itself. And then I was like, yeah, I'm probably going to get on. And the next day I got reached out by one of his team members. And then they set up the whole thing over there. I think there was about like seven people who got to ask questions. But he definitely gave a lot of clarity in my kind of situation. I'm sure this applies to a lot of different contexts. Because even when I was getting to fitness, I'm sure a lot of people get to fitness too as well. It's like they have their old self, which is maybe gaming, maybe it's party or something like that. But then new identity is trying to work out to have a new lifestyle. So I'm not going to have friends who, or, you know, that big friend group who's really heavy into like the way of working out, better new lives. They probably have the most friends where they're drinking partying still. So when you're trying to make that transition, it's kind of lonely kind of going to there because you're not on stage where it's like, okay, you kind of prove to the people who already been working out for a long time and stuff like that, being committed, but you're just trying to get into there. So probably going to feel lonely too as well, making that transition. And that definitely applies for business too as well. I know been at it for quite a while. And even just like stages to it, it's like as you grow, because a lot of people, when it comes to business wise, it's like stages, right? Maybe they're, people are satisfied making 5K a month, maybe it's 10K a month, maybe it's 15, but like each stage to as well, it's like you kind of see people with different mindsets, you see people who are kind of stagnant, you see people who want to grow. And it's all these different kinds of stages where you kind of might have that shift. I'd say it's more incremental ones versus fitness wise. No, definitely not. I completely resonate with both those things. I mean, we, we both have a fitness business, right? So it's like, <laughs> we kind of like are in both of those boats where we're super into fitness, but we're also, and I think it's even unique, like fitness business. It's like, it's your life, right? It's like, it's a personal brand type of thing. So it's like literally everything you're, you're posting and everything is like, you know, surrounded around this. So a lot of times it's, you're, you're so ambitious and so into this thing that you're doing, it kind of surrounds your whole life. It's, it's almost like if, if other people aren't talking about what you're into, it's kind of like what Alex says, where he, he's just talking about business. Like that's what he enjoys talking about. And so it's, it's like, if, if other people aren't enjoying talking about that, he doesn't know what to talk about. <laughs> Sometimes I feel like that with, with both fitness and business. It's like, it's, it's just something I love to talk about something I I'm so passionate about that. If other people aren't into these things, I, I just, it's like, I want to be talking about this, you know what I mean? So, um, yeah, so I, I completely resonate with that. But what what are you doing to like seek out, um, you know, obviously we were in the same um, like fitness coaching little group and that's how we met. But what, what other ways are you doing to kind of seek out like minded, ambitious people to associate yourself with? Yeah, so at the moment, it was really trying to find those little fitness online communities, kind of smaller ones we can tap into. I was into the mentorship before for like two years. So I used to have that solid group where it kind of felt more like that, but now just reaching out more to people as well who are like online fitness coaches and like replying more to stories and they're replying more to mine, just kind of having those casual conversations too as well. So yeah. that's why I kind of did it after Alex Moses, but also I know one of my friends local, he has like a creative entrepreneur group and he really like everybody pretty much watched that Alex Mosey is a big fan of him and they kind of saw a podcast too as well. So he really went to the link. So like rekindling that group because it's kind of dead again. Now we're doing a lot of hangouts on a regular basis, even though they're not like all fitness guys, they're all like business and just kind of late more on that aspect. So it's like we're meeting up more, even like after this, I'm going to go meet up at the coffee shop and do some work with them, which is like those different conversations like you're mentioning and Obviously, if you're having a fitness talks and also business, like a win-win of both of them, ideal yeah. situation. We love talking about that. But it's just like even having somebody who has more like growth mindset and just wanting to do better, it's significantly different than the average show out there who's usually working like a nine to five and just kind of going home and sad and rinse and repeat, right? Watching Netflix. So that's like a whole different vibe. And I have a harder time connecting with those people on that kind of level, like in terms of building relationships. But I have a good relationship in terms of me trying to help them have a better mindset because that's some coach right He's trying to get them to fit get them to better mindset of opening up so that's why yeah. i really kind of preach it's like fitness obviously is one thing to get the best shape but like what comes along with it how much confidence you carry and like how much more you generally want to do it's something that people really want to track towards for sure 
Yeah. And I, I want to speak to that too. Cause you said, you know, you're, it's almost like you're a coach to those individuals that maybe aren't as growth minded as you. So I, I think there's a place for that, right? It's like, you want to have people that are high above you that you're associating with, right? You don't want to just um, be the smartest guy in the room, right? You want, you want to have people that are like at a higher level than you. You want to surround yourself with a lot of people that are kind of like peers that are kind of going through the same stuff as you, you know, kind of like these groups that you're talking about, but also maybe with the, the people that, you know, aren't as growth minded or into the things that you're into, maybe you can help them come up and, and level up to, to where you're at. I think there's a, you know, a mindset where, um, that's, that's kind of how I think about it, where if someone's not where I'm at, maybe I, I can connect with them by helping them maybe adopt some of the, the mindset traits or, or, or beliefs that I have and help them kind of raise their level. So there's a, there's a sort of problem with that one too, as well, because I noticed as I was growing business, but also social media wise, a lot of people reach out and like a lot of close friends too, as well. And they're like, yo, I'd love your help, right? Even for example, last week I had, I think, three or two people, but I know for two for sure. One of them was like, he just lost his job at a good life too as well. And then I, I helped him in person to as well, get like starts all my business and all that. And then like, he didn't really kind of fall through with it. Actually, both of them, I helped them do the exact same thing. They didn't really kind of fall through it. One of them even quit now, but well, he got fired. And now he's at a local gym and he was like, I really want to grow my own business even more. So it's like, okay, this day I could do Wednesday at like 2 p.m. or like 6 p.m., right? So like, okay, I'll let you know my schedule, right? But he never got back to me after that. And like, I'm offering my help to him. And this is should be a time where he expressed to me, he really wanted to grow his business. I helped him out before. Like, this is all for free too as well because he was like a good friend. But it's like, yes, he didn't really want to grow it to that extent. And that is something I can't help out if someone, like if I want to help him out more than he wants to help himself, yeah, I can't do anything about that. It's all the same scenario with the other guy too as well, where we planned like it was like a week in advance. And the day of he bailed last minute, he's like, oh, I actually have some more errands to run. So I can't do this week, but can we help me out like next week, right? And I told him, I was like, it's all about priorities, right? Like you prioritize your workouts all the time by itself. You get them done at that time, no matter what. And you're prioritizing your errands over this business, which is something you told me you really wanted to do. Yeah. And I'm offering you my time. You asked me for the help, you reached out. So it's like, you got to prove it to me next week. If you post at least twice a week, post in your story every single day, then I'll give you another opportunity. But if not, then no, right? Because um, I value my time and you clearly are not valuing it on that right. extent. So yeah. I will offer help, but people have to show me A, they're implementing or, you know, they're taking it seriously, basically. So For sure. That's a big For sure. continuous yeah. thing. Yeah, you can't want it more than someone else wants it, right? It's it's not going to work that way. They they need to they need to have the drive, and then you can give them the, the implementation or like how to actually execute, right? So, hundred percent agree with that, man. Um, what would you challenge the listeners to do um, to kind of like take that first step? You know, if if they're wanting to level up their their fitness in their in their mindset what what would you like to challenge the listeners to do what's one simple thing i would say the one simplest thing and the biggest thing would be really trying to surround yourself with like new people or new friend group because right away even with that it is so powerful yeah. because your old friends are probably what was like that saying it's like your five four or five friends are kind of who you'd be like or if like you know so I'm a five millionaire to be the six, something like that. It's the same principle when it comes to fitness or business. Is if you surround yourself with the old friend group, you're probably that, but also you're gonna have a hard time getting out of that. So if you're really trying to find those new friends or really following new people, it's like more business people instead of, you know, yeah. um, I'm not gonna say like the milk boys, but like you know, that party scene or those kind of people, it's your your environment's gonna play a huge role. So right away I'd say that's the biggest thing, switching up your mindset and being more into that no 100 percent. yeah it's just it's gonna rub off on you right either either the people that you're hanging around are gonna cause you to to level up or or they're dragging you down right so you really and we're, we're kind of coming into a new year so i think it's kind of perfect timing to really be thinking about that type of stuff like you know really kind of audit your life and and look at who you're surrounding yourself with um and see if in this next year if one of your main resolutions if you want to make it like, I, I want to level up my network, 
right? Because your your network really does end up being your net worth, right? It's in, and it's how, like Kevin is saying, that's how you can level up your mindset. It's it's really going to rub off on you either in a positive or negative direction. Either way, you know, the people you're hanging around are having an influence on you. So 100% agree, man, for sure. Um, what is your kind of like fitness and, and life philosophy? Kind of what, you know, what we can start with fitness. Like what, what's kind of your fitness philosophy? When you say philosophy, what exactly do you mean by that? Just like, you know, <laughs> what kind of people do you work with and how, like, what's kind of your approach with, with getting, with coaching people in fitness? Okay. So I would say the first one is definitely, well, one, when they hire me as a coach, they're kind of surrounded, like I mentioned earlier, by someone who's trying to do more and push you more, yeah. right? And also have a community too as well where they're in that group where everybody's trying to do better. You know, they hired me as a coach for a reason. They're trying to be a better version of themselves, trying to get more fit and all that stuff. So I believe like that surrounding yourself and just hiring somebody right off the bat elevates you, like how you hired Alex Toplin. I hired him too as well because I want to be, you know, pushed to even more, right? Yeah. Because a lot of times we don't even see our own potential and somebody else can see the potential and really push us towards that, right? It's like that ceiling you put for ourselves. It's like, no, you're actually playing at 10%. You might be, you know, you can go to like 100% over there and just have that extra push and extra like, you know, support and well, almost like validation when you're doing things right too as well. Like kicking ass when you're not giving 100%. Yeah. I'd say is a big part, right? For sure. Because at the end of the day, too, as well, fitness is pretty simple in terms of like fat loss, right? And I think a lot of people kind of have a hard time with that one is because of their mindset behind it, right? But also what they've kind of surrounded themselves with in terms of like people-wise. Everybody else is grabbing donuts at the office or something like that. Your chances are you're probably going to grab one too as well. But when I was started surrounding or joining a coaching program or surrounding yourself with people who are trying to do better and don't grab those donuts, you're like, okay, well, I'll actually grab that donut too as well, right? So yeah. if everybody around you is, it's like, it's our natural instinct as human beings to follow the kind of cult and follow that normal path over there of just, you know, going to nine to five or eating out all the time and drinking. Like that's the norm right now and everybody's doing that. You're more like, hey, do it. So you have to find those new solutions. You have to seek out something else. You have to, you know, hire a coach to, if you don't have access to any of that, right? And so it's like, it's like actually push over there. For sure. No, yeah, I think I, I completely agree. Like Alex was able to to hold me to a certain standard that really, like one, once I started working with him, like I literally started holding my own clients to a higher standard. And it's like, like you said, like sometimes you just need that kick in the ass or like some real talk. Um, And, and it's like surround yourself with those people that are willing to um, like hold you to that standard and not just sugarcoat it, right? And kind of like you were saying, with the two friends that you were trying to help out, it's like, you know, you, you, if you would have just said like, yeah, yeah, that's okay. Um, you know, we can reschedule. Like they, they wouldn't have had the tone or like had the standard of like, okay, no, I need to be serious about this. But since you're, I think that was perfect. What you said where you're like, no, you need to show me that you want this because you need to hold them to, to a certain standard that's going to push them and help them grow. So I completely agree. And hold, surround yourself with people like that <clears throat> is going to help you level up hundred percent. So I, completely agree with that um you know what, what what is your new year's resolution this year kevin like what do you what are you trying to level up and, and work on in 2024 never actually had any really new year's resolutions You're just kind of like goals as goals like i don't set them for January first is like i set them when i completed my last school like i'm judging sure. board right in my house over there i look at every single day it was like that vision completely changed because like I pretty much accomplished like everything on the vision book before. So immediately after I accomplished it, I put up a new vision over there. But if we're talking like goals wise in that sense, what's my vision board? I have 50K a month over there for sure. And I'm trying to do that within a couple of months actually, just because I hired a new person on and gave my citizens more check. I have a new mind for two as well. So just trying to level up there. I have the five employees I have two right now. I had a third full-time editor. But then my own editing style was getting more views itself, so I, I let go of him. And in terms of community-wise, is something I'm trying to focus on too as well. A, building my own, making that more strong, 
but also having my own personal in person. So I'm moving to Kelowna, which is like a big fitness town here in Canada. So I'm doing that again next month, and that's a big thing that I really want to. So yeah, that's pretty much. And I guess I have a Tesla Roadster, but that's for like way later on. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah so that's, like, that's my goal for that's like a five year thing because I don't really need that much of a fancy car. It's just something I <laughs> want after I got my Model Three. I was like, okay, well, I need the next vision for that. <laughs> there you go. Nice man. Yeah, well, what's what's driving you to to reach all this? Like, what what pushes you? What what motivates you to want to reach all these goals? Honestly, all it comes down to lift and spar, like kind of mentioned earlier. Yeah, it's like I just generally want to show people, like, go for what you want in life and don't do what is expected of you itself, because ultimately that's going to pay off so much more in the end. And a big part of it is being the black sheep of my family, what I call it. So, like, none of my cousins or brothers or family members are business owners or or risk or like successful in that aspect. Like, I'm literally only first business owner, someone who is outside that kind of spectrum. Or even like fitness wise, like if I stood next to like my family, like like I did on Friday, I'm like three times bigger, like no joke. <laughs> it's like everybody's like very small, very in that nine to five, very like that ordinary category. And I want it to be that black sheep. And yeah. I just want to show from like if I could go from like the person who's seen my photos kind of before. And also somebody who I actually attempted suicide once, but that's a different story, way back over there. But it's such a dark place and it's just skinny. Like I want to show people like anything's fucking possible, right? And just yeah. through my own story of overcoming all that, also having all this adversity, my family too is full because some people can relate. It's like, yeah, so I just want to be such on the polar opposite where I can inspire people along the way because I know if you're ordinary, that inspires nobody. And you have to be extraordinary or be to a certain extent to have that impact. And I truly want to do have that. And I know the bigger I grow to as well, the more impact that I could have. I love that, man. That's awesome. I think you worded that perfectly. Um, and I'm sure you are inspiring a lot. And I think it's it's awesome that you're you're in that mindset of like you kind of want to pave the path and like show like do something extraordinary and be like look, this is possible. Like if, if you can do it without support, right. Cause you know, I feel like you're, you're even starting from maybe a tougher place than me where I, I had like full, like my parents are very supportive. Right. So you had to go against that. So that's even more inspiring. Um, so, so that's awesome, man. I'm sure you're inspiring a lot of people that maybe were in that similar boat. If maybe I feel like a lot of immigrant parents are like that, or, or, you know, people that, that maybe just come from a family where entrepreneurship just isn't something that that is in the family right so i feel like that's going to resonate with a lot of people and you're you're going to inspire lots of people to kind of pave that path for themselves so that's awesome very cool i appreciate that matt <laughs> yeah definitely yeah i think it's cool that you have a vision board i, I don't i haven't met many people that have one i've, I've got one right here myself <laughs> too uh, alex hormozzi is, is someone that's on my vision board because i just have oh, yeah, yeah I've, I've got people that inspire me um i've got you know old pictures of myself what i look like now um, you know, like you said, things that you want to have. So I, I think that's, I think it's an underrated thing to be able to look at, you know, the things that you want to accomplish. And it's a testament. You said you've already accomplished a lot of things on the vision board, right? So it's like, it's just literally the, you can manifest this stuff. You just have to have that clear vision and take the time to, to map out exactly what that looks like. So that's awesome. hundred percent. I do believe in the power of that one because most people, they set a goal to as well. It's like, you have your whole day, you probably forget about it right away. Like when you have something like a vision board right in front of you, you see it all the time. It's like, yeah. it's putting that more in the forefront of mind once again, and constantly. Yeah. So your action steps kind of more align with what that is, right? And maybe if like, even weight, like weight loss people itself, everybody wants to look good. Everybody wants a six pack, right? When I set that goal, it's like, and then they, after a long day of work, they go to McDonald's or they, you see a golden art sign, they stop by there, you know, it's in the back of the mind itself, pull their six pack once again, but yeah. you kind of, constantly have that goals kind of popping up like i have my phone screen background we also check our phones a lot laptop background vision board it's like always putting those goals forefront of mind always reminding yourself it's like i think it's really powerful in this thing absolutely man yeah because i think a lot of people don't pay attention to their their subconscious right and it's like if you don't pay attention to that stuff then you're, you're subconsciously just going to be like letting your goals slip right it, it's you have to like train your subconscious to to always be um, like having these, like you said, the goal is like forefront of your brain. So it's just always there. And you're always, a, it's a constant reminder every single day or else it's just going to slip. So I think it's super powerful, hundred percent. So well, cool, man. Well, what's, what's next for you? I know you just said some of your, your goals, but like, you know, what, what's kind of in the works as far as maybe things that are 
um, changing with your business or maybe like a, do you have any bodybuilding competitions coming up? What's, what's kind of like, you know, in the works for you? So I just hired another full-time virtual assistant over here to kind of nice. help out even more. And then once I'm fully training him because my other one, she was working part-time in that aspect. And she just got her dream job as a kid as a flight attendant over there. So I was really happy for her Had to go nice. look for another person. <laughs> but then I'm um, shadow coach right now self and hopefully I can progress it more into a bigger role itself as I get more clients here as well as my new work assistant kind of gets into that flow and books more calls like help more people but then after that is for the fitness side I'm trying to do the Olympia amateur in like two years because one I know it's a fucking big show (laughs) so it's gonna be a hell of a show itself and if I win that one it's up to to statement right it's like okay This guy for sure, for sure is an IP pro, right? Because if you win that show, like everybody knows it. And also it's like the most prestigious one, but I also want to watch Olympia after that because I feel like it's so cool. Just get in that crowd and just go to the expo and meet a lot of people because I'm bigger into the industry now. So yeah. I feel like that experience itself, it's like being there, walking on the expos, but then watching the big show to kind of inspire me to get to the next level work like that. I feel like it's going to be such a cool experience. <laughs> that's awesome, yeah. man. Yeah. I'm, I'm pumped up as well as I guess what's I'm that moving, moving next month so that's a big move too oh nice. that's my hometown for quite a while and i've been traveling around the world figuring out where i want to live and ultimately deciding to live over here because it's the first place where i travel in the world where it's like i could generally live here. i want to live here right because yeah. i traveled like 21 countries so far in each place i nearly have that feeling like some place i was like i could live here but this place just felt right i was like i want to live here i could see myself living forever it's yeah. like it's pretty cool to actually have that feeling <laughs> yeah and wh- where did you say you're at right now where were you deciding on Kelowna so that's like in British Kelowna. Columbia in uh, Canada okay yeah it's more of like a fitness town a lot of fit people over there and it's just better weather lakes beach over there it's it's nice, nice. <laughs> well awesome man well I'm, I'm pumped up for you man I'm, I'm excited to follow your journey and get it man make it to the Olympia I'm, I want to see you on stage there man that's gonna be badass so <laughs> Very cool, brother. Well, sweet. Well, um, where can people find you? What, where? I know you're all over the place on social media, but what, what are your handles and where can people find you? Yes, my Instagram is definitely the one I check the most. My biggest one is at Kevin Wubu underscore. And then for TikTok, it is Wubu Fitness. YouTube is Wubu Fitness. And Facebook is just my name, Kevin Wubu over there. So Instagram is definitely the best place to reach out to me. If you want to shoot me a DM, I check all my DMs over there. And y'all should get back to you. <laughs> awesome. Awesome, brother. Well, cool, man. Well, it's nice to meet you officially on here. You know, we, I've kind of just seen you through like social media and, you know, kind of connected with you through Alex and everything. So really cool to actually meet you and talk with you. I feel like, you know, we're, we're kind of like what we're talking about, maybe like-minded individuals that are ambitious, you know, wanting to level up. So it's good to connect with you. Um, guys, take this stuff that we're talking about, you know, apply it to your own life. Um, Kevin's just spitting value bombs on this, but put it into action right away. You know, don't just listen, like try to implement these things right away to level up in 2024. Okay. So appreciate you guys. Appreciate you, Kevin guys, make sure to subscribe, um, and make sure to level up and join the fitness junkie movement on the elevate everyday podcast in 2024 guys. Um, and I'll see you guys in the next video. And in the meantime, elevate every damn day. Thanks Kevin. Elevate. Only obligation is to tell it straight.